Hey YouTube, it's Mr. Lufu. This is being recorded at midnight. Um, but this is the day before I go and visit Zemet in uh in for Four Star City Games, Kansas City. Um and uh, I figured to show that I'm yes, still alive somehow. After the past few weeks have been pretty brutal, um, physically, mentally, just super tiring and stuff. So um I have the deck that I top aided the um, SEG IQ with, and I figured I'd go over it for a quick, quick sec. Uh, this is probably a very similar list to what I will be playing in uh, at Kansas City for the Standard Open. I'll probably get my butt kicked, but I don't care. Um, so I run one, two, three Absence Pilgrims. I'd rather run two and swap one out with a Prime Speaker Zagana that you'll see later on, but. Um, I couldn't get a hold of a second Zagana because first one got lost in the mail, so I had to pull one from my own collection to send it back. Um, four Farseeks, which is how I started the deck, because Farseeks are amazing. Um, four Zorius Charms, a Simic Charm, and a single Celestia Charm. I know people are going to be wondering why I play one Simic and one Celestia. Um, because they offer each unique different things, and with the amount of card draw engines that I have going on, um, they typically hit one or both, and they they do work. Um, Celestia Charms can add to like exiling Olivia. Simic Charm can bounce Olivia mid combat, both of which are good. Um, that's basically all I've used them for. I have used Simic Charm to give all stuff. I have Hexproof, and I haven't quite gotten greedy enough. And you'll see what what I mean by greedy. Three Lingering Souls because Lingering Souls is a good card, and you'll see there's another reason why. Two Oblivion Ring. And two Supreme Verdicts for a little bit more removal package. Um, the the basis of the deck is to play three three Biomancer. I couldn't play four because the four slot was getting really really full. But Biomancer is a really good card with Lingering Souls because Lingering Souls will just net you two three three flyers for three mana or two mana with when you flash it back. Very very powerful Biomancer. So they basically have to have a removal for it, or they have to have an answer. Period. And uh, that's what I like a lot about him, is you untap with him a lot, and if you untap with him, stuff gets done. Say, perchance, Restoration Angels gives him protection. Um, he also works pretty well with the four Thrag Tusks. You gotta... I mean, I started the deck basis basically saying, okay, four, four, six, four Restoration Angel, four Thrag Tusk, and how many Master Biomancers is that I'm going to play? And then I built the deck around that. Um, Garrick Primal Hunter, another very good card with um, with Master Biomancer, helps you curve out Biomancer into a 5-5, five five, or 5, which is, you know, with a Planeswalker in play. Um, a Singleton Syncopate, which I'm not sure if this is right or not. I'm, I'm very much considering getting rid of it. Um, and then draw package is two Sphinx's Revelation and a Prime Speaker Zagana. Again, if I could swap an Abyssinian Pilgrim with another Zagana, I would, because... I have, in fact, cast a Zagana when I had a Thrag Tusk and a Master Biomancer in play. And I was just like, sweet, 10 cards. Whoink! And refilled. Um, mana base, 3 Hinterland Harbor, 3 Glacials, 3 Hollow Fountains, 3 Breeding Pools, 4 Temple Gardens, 4 Sun Petal Groves, a Singleton Godless Shrine, a Singleton Overgrown Tomb, and 2 Gavany Township. Um... My mana base is a little bit weird, and I used a, a very complicated Excel spreadsheet and a lot of math to try to figure out what would be the optimum amount of mana given the spells I was casting and what I had available and what I wanted to hit on each turn. Um, I hit black 50% of the time on an average case, which is good if you want to hit Lingering Souls flashback, but sometimes you don't you know you don't need black, you need like second blue for to open up Zigana or um, Sphinx's Revelation, where you want to hit double white for Supreme Verdict, which is typically not that hard. Double white. Double white, double green is hard. Or double white, double green is easy. Triple green you have to be wary about for Garrick. Um, double blue is probably the hardest one to find in the deck. You actually have to plan for that. So basically, the most skill-intensive moment when playing this deck is knowing what to fetch with Farseek. Because it's not easy, because you have to be thinking like three or four turns ahead, what could be happening what cards would be good to draw and cast, or, you know, what lands would be best to be able to cast them, blah, blah, blah. 
Um, so this deck took me to a top 8 of the SCG Super IQ. Um, not much else. I, I basically told the story. I'm still finishing up the article. I am basically have written everything except for the deck choices. So that's sort of what this video is for. I'm going to go to bed. I have to get up uh, in like 8 hours and then drive over to Zemet to see if I can make him make it to, to where he wants me to be for FNM. Uh, probably not going to make it there, to be honest, um, just because of the time change and I have to actually do a few errands beforehand. So, anyway, thank you guys all for watching. Rate, comment, subscribe, and um, 